Star Trek Lower Decks episode Room for Growth has shown the series excellent growth with this latest released episode. Once again, the show breaks the crew off into different arcs, but manages to deliver promising, quality, entertaining, and hilarious narratives throughout. And you can thank the Cerritos engineers for that. The episode hilariously starts off with Captain Freeman levitating through the halls of the Cerritos, controlled by an ancient mask. Oh boy, we got an ancient mask situation here. In the wake of these events, Freeman remarks on how stressed out the crew is and how everyone needs to go on a much needed relaxation getaway. Tendi overhears the Delta shift plotting to overtake the Beta shift, which is also known as our main characters for the lottery room. The lottery room is revealed to be the open bunks on deck one. Tendi, Boimler, and Mariner band together going through various struggles in their inner workings of the Cerritos. Probably the standout of this entire episode was the thumbnail where the trio are stuck in a swamp part of the ship with low amounts of oxygen. This causes the three to go into a rather hilarious hallucination. Hey guys, this is actually so funny. Look at this. It says oxygen levels are depleting. <laughs> On the other part of the episode, the crew, led by Freeman, are at this resort struggling to distress. They're constantly trying to work, fix things, and it sends Freeman into a stressful tailspin where she's even stiff-arming puppies. Okay, Freeman, I get your stress, but let's chill out a little bit. In the, arms of the, the episode ends with the crew finding a way around the stress by building a machine to de-stress Freeman in 10 seconds, and our trio, having found they didn't want to break up the shift, decide to let Delta Shift take the free room on deck one. This episode was another great one. It had plenty of great bits, including Ransom building his own churro's wife in his quarters, Shax and the Doctor going through their own black and white cops and robbers holodeck as their form of unexpected foreplay, the surprising bits of what felt like were small callbacks to Deep Space Nine, and so much more. Ironically, I had just watched the episode of Starship Down from Deep Space Nine. In that episode, Chief O'Brien explains to Worf that engineers are happiest when they're solving problems. You have to understand, they're out of their element. They're not bridge officers, they haven't made to Starfleet Academy. They're engineers. This came abundantly clear throughout the episode. But it turns out for us, there is no greater stress relief than engineering a solution to a problem. I think we should route the generator up through the secondary power grid. We'll have to recalibrate the ODN manifold. I'm not sure if this was an episode that was used as a piece for this episode's narrative, but it was a great fit no matter what. The animations continue to soar once again, even if there wasn't some ridiculous space battle. The hallucination aspects was done wonderfully, and the black and white holodeck scene was just gorgeous. Before giving my final verdict on the episode, here are some of my favorite out of context moments from the episode. This is bad. Increase puppy levels. Oh. So I guess I'll do that. Do I sound cool? Come. Something fun to read in case all the relaxing gets boring. It's like a petty for your hand toes. Overall, Lower Decks continues with another well-rounded, fun, well-animated episode. As I've said in prior reviews, Lower Decks is doing less and less callbacks to Trek of old and is instead building on its own universe and its own crew. I can't wait to see more. If you want to hear me talk more about Trek, click on this video here and I'll see you on the next one.